Today, it's our great pleasure to have Yu Zhang from Nankai University, who will be speaking on causal duality and TQ homological whitehead theorem for structured ring spectra. <laughs> Take it away. It's a long title. <laughs> all right, so uh, thanks, Martin, for inviting me, and thank you all for uh, attending my talk. So um, I have been reading your seminar website, and I noticed that you have been talking about differential graded algebras. So let's start from there. Uh, let's first recall some basic definitions. Let's try this, yes. So now let R be a commutative ring. Then a chain complex over R is a sequence of R modules. Let's call them MN. Together with structure maps. From MN to MN minus one, such that d square is equal to zero. All right, so that's a regular definition for a chain complex. And in the category of chain complex, there is a tensor product. where the tensor product of M and N, so on level N is defined as a direct sum, I plus J is equal to N, and I tensor NJ. Right, and which makes the category of chain complex into a symmetric monoidal category. Now here's a definition for different regraded algebras and different regraded co-algebras. So an unital differential graded associative R algebra is a non unital monoid in this category. So in particular, it is an object with a multiplication M from A tensor A to A such that the diagram commutes. Modification, modification, identity, modification, tensor identity. All right, so that's our definition for non unital differential graded associative R algebra. Here I'm not assuming it to have a unit, and also I'm emphasizing that it is associative for data purpose. And similarly, a non unital differential graded 
associative are coalgebra is a nonunital cohomoid. So instead of a multiplication, I will have a co multiplication. So C together with a co multiplication from C to C tensor C, such that the diagram from C to C tensor C, C tensor C, C tensor C tensor C, tensor C and this diagram will commute. And more proved this duality between the uh, associative algebras and associative co-algebras. So it's a theorem of more. So he looked at this category of non-unital associative differential graded algebras, chain complex over R. And the right-hand side is the category of co-algebras, non-unital, in the category of chain complex over R. Um, so the result is that when we restrict to certain subcategories, so for example, if we assume the left-hand side is uh, zero connected, so it's concentrated on level greater than or equal to one, and we assume the right-hand side is, uh, we take the subcategory of one connected, so it's concentrated on level above uh, level two, then there is an equivalence of their homotopy categories. So there's an interesting adjunction between like the algebra side and the co-algebra side. And certainly since we have, now we have a symmetric model category, we can talk about other algebraic structures. We can, well, it's not just associative um, or like commutative. We can also talk about like, for example, when Quinlan worked on the rational homotopy theory. So Quinlan studied those Lie algebras and co-commutative co-algebras. It's a theorem of Quinlan. So now we look at the Lie algebras in the category of chain complex over the rational numbers. And we also look at these co commutative co algebras, non unital, in the category, well, different degree algebras, co algebras. And the result is like if we restrict to zero connected on the left-hand side and one connected on the right-hand side, then we will have an equivalence of their homotopy theory. And moreover, Quinlan proves that these two um, homotopy categories are again equivalent to the homotopy category of rational spaces when we uh, restrict to simply connected spaces. So the left-hand side, this category is is a homotopy theory you will uh, is a homotopy theory you will get when you look at those simply connected spaces and you like only consider their um, rational homology equivalence. So that's a homotopy theory you will care about. And the result is, is saying that to do homotopy theory, there are two purely algebraic models. One is in terms of uh, different graded Lie algebras and uh, one is in terms of different graded co-commutative co algebras So you can find a purely algebraic model for homotopy theories that turns a topological question into those like algebraic questions. And actually in homotopy theory, there's a family of 
similar behavior. There's a duality between the outer side and the co-outer side, and there will be uh, equivalents of their homotopy categories when we restrict to certain subcategories. And this uh, phenomenon is called <clears throat> causal duality for structure in spectrum. Um, so this duality looks like here we have an adjunction, the left hand side is certain or algebra, and the right hand side is certain co-algebra or some k. And we have this adjunction, and you will have an uh, equivalence of their homotopy categories when mm, uh, let's say this when restricted to certain subcategories. So of course, there's a lot of things to be unpacked here. There's like several like, unfamiliar terminologies. So the first question is, okay, so what are spectrum? Second question, what are structured ring spectrum? And what is this adjunction? And when is that an equivalence? So let me answer these questions one by one, and let's start from the um, easiest. What are spectrum? So if you are familiar with spectrum, then here I'm talking about, well, in this talk, I will choose a particular, uh, choose one like nice point sign model, uh, point sign model for spectrum. Uh, for example, you can choose your favorite from like S modules, uh, symmetric spectrum or um, orthogonal spectrum. Here implicitly in this talk, I'm working with symmetric spectrum, but the result will also hold in other settings. And if you are not familiar with spectrum, no problem, then you can just think of a spectrum as the topological analog for chain complex. So basically it looks like, um, so spectrum is a sequence of spaces, which consists of, I say, Xn together is structure maps from sigma xn to xn plus one, well, satisfying certain conditions. And the point is spectrum is the topological analog of chain complex. And indeed, we have the result by uh, Schweda and Shipley. They have an equivalence of homotopy series. The left hand side is the homotopy category of chain complex over R, where R is a commutative ring. And the right hand side is a homotopy category of HR modules. So that's an equivalence of their home series. Okay, so here HR is a, a number McLean spectrum corresponding to the ring, commutative ring R. And 
Yep, so there's an equivalence of their home to theory. Okay, sorry, I should say something probably. Um, so they, I don't know what sh how Schweda was involved in that, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but also that's actually in my thesis about 10 years, 10 years before Brooks, Brooks' paper. Oh, I see. Sure. Um, um, just, just, for your, just for your information. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah, I will check the references. Yeah. Yeah. Um, All right, so uh, I, I, uh, I noticed that uh, in your seminar last week, you also talk about like similar structures on the uh, chain complex. So a quick review. So the category of chain complex over R has a model structure where the weak equivalences are so it's quasi isomorphisms. And the five regions are degree wise ipomorphisms. And the co vibrations are defined in terms of the life leafing properties. And this model structure makes the category of chain complex over R into a symmetric monoidal model category. And the point is, well, now we can induce, we can transfer the model structure from the category of chain complex of R to the category of monoids in this category. So that is the same as the category of different graded algebras. So here we use a free forgettable function. Have chain complex of R, we have free we have forgetful to algebras in the category of chain complex of R. We can use that to transfer model structure. And so the category of different grid algebras has model structure, where the big equivalences are exactly those uh, quasi isomorphisms. So again, the co vibrations are defined in terms of life different properties, and the vibrations are just degree-wise ipomorphisms. So a map on the right-hand side is a weak equivalence or vibration if and only if after we forget down to the category of chain complex, that is a big equivalence or um, vibration. And the same idea also works for HR modules. Now it's a result of Shipley that if we restrict to, well, if we, knew, if we use the model structures on uh, different grid algebras over R and the induced uh, transform model structure on the category of HR algebras, we will still have an equivalence of home tree series. So indeed, the uh, well spectrum behaves pretty much like the uh, chain complexes. All right, so next question. So what are structured ring spectrum? So, 
So here's the short answer. So they are spectrum with certain generalized algebraic structure. described as O algebras for some opera O. So I noticed that instead of just giving you this uh, rigorous definition for opera and drawing those huge cumulative diagrams, it might be better to just give you some intuition and some motivations, like why do we care about these generalized algebraic structures? So let's look at the example of, um, okay, let's start from here. So in classical algebra, we like often talk about so strict structures like strictly commutative or like strictly associative. Um, but the point is once we step into the world of topology, uh, you will realize that sometimes this naturally occurring algebraic structure is just not strict. For example, if we take the concatenation of loops, um, then the loop concatenation is not strictly associative, but only like associative out of homotopy. Um, so let's say, for example, we take any space X with a base point X zero, uh, we have a loop a, a loop B, and loop C. Then the loop concatenation, uh, by definition, we have A times B, then multiplied by C, is not the same as A times B times C, because the first one takes half of the time to travel around C, and a quarter of the time to travel um, around A and B, but the second one takes half of the time to travel around A, so they are not exactly equal, but it's not difficult to realize that they are actually homotopic. Um, however, if you just describe this loop concatenation algebra structure as an um, associated after homotopy, then here we are actually losing certain information. So for example, we can draw the following pentagon. Here, uh, okay. So AB times CD. Here's AB times C times D. Here's A times BC times D. Here's A times B times CD. Um, here's uh, a times B, C times D, yes. So each dot here, I mean a certain way to take the, take their product. And the edges correspond to a certain homotopy between the dots. But now if I look at the pentagon, I can take the upper path to get a home to be from um, the left point to the right point, or I can travel around the lower path to get another home to be from the left point to the right point. So I got two different home to be's, and they are not necessarily equal. But still from the, uh, well, just looking at the topology here, it's uh, not difficult to find there is a homotopy between these two unnecessary equal homotopies. So we can fill in this pentagon. So the point is, well, if you just describe this algebraic structure as associative of the homotopy, then you can only draw this, um, uh, the boundaries in this pentagon, but the actual 
natural occurrence of the structure here also tell us something about the interior of the Pentagon. So just describing them as authority of the home is not enough because we are losing certain information. And so this to describe this uh, sort of more um, more subtle or regular behaviors, we need to introduce a notion of an opera. Um, all right, so here I'm going to just tell you the um, idea of opera in the category of topological spaces, but the same idea will also work for, um, uh, for spectrum. So it's a collection of spaces, call them ON for n greater than or equal to one. Excuse and, me? Uh, mm -hmm, yep. Did you say the operad talks about the interior? Um, uh, we could, and that's part of the point. So to tell us like a uh, um, certain like higher uh, layer information. We could use opera to describe the interior. Thank you. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. <laughs> yeah, so basically, to, um, so let me add something. So basically the point to introduce opera is like because our structures are not strict, because we want to describe things like up to homotopy, but not only up to homotopy, but actually uh, like up to coherent homotopy, so that we want to describe those like homotopy between homotopies and homotopy between homotopy between homotopies. So that's why we need to use like the more like um, complicated notion of opera. And we will see um, examples. And so it's a collection of spaces together with right action. of sigma n on open such that well there's um several like compatibility conditions but um i'm just giving you the intuition here so i'm not just uh, write down like all of the definitions and um, um, o space or we call it o algebra is a space X together with a, a compatible modifications. From O N cross X times n copies of X, where we um, require that to be semen equivalent. Here we have semen action on ON. We also have like the permutation of the n copies of X. From that to X. So intuitively, here, like each point in ON tells you a formula to multiply n things together. And the space of n is a collection of all such formulas. So O n stands for like your uh, family of n multiplications. Let's see, uh, for example, Here is the uh, associative opera. And the associative opera has on level n plus equal to sigma n. So if x, space x, is an um, associative space or associative algebra, then we have maps from sigma n 
cross x on copies of x, sigma equivalent to x. So if you look at the, um, this definition here and think about like what that actually means, so that means whenever you have, okay, so let's say we choose n elements in x and we put them in a sequence. And once we fix their order appearing in the sequence, we will have a unique way to get their product. So for example, if you take the product of A, B, and C, say A, B, C, C, and X, then um, A, B, C could be different from <clears throat> B, A, C because they appear in different order in the sequence, but we can guarantee that A, B times C is the same as um, A times B, C because like there's just one unique way to take their product as specified by this um, all product algebra structure. So that's what, we, uh, that's what we mean by being associative. Like taking the product doesn't depend on like the order you take the product. And second example, the little interval operand. Okay, so here is a, a this, this notation int uh, is, is my own notation. It's not like a standard notation, but I find it might better suit the purpose of this talk. A little interval operand. And on level n, that is given by if, uh, the space of embeddings from n disjoint union of intervals into one interval. So for example, um, a point an element in int level two is given by, okay, we embed two, intervals to one interval. That's one way of embedding. Um, a loop space, loop y, is an int algebra. So we'll naturally have an algebra structure over this little interval operat and these uh, structure maps is given by, all right, so I have int two cross loop y, uh, another copy of loop y, two loop y. So here I have this embedding I have a loop called A, and I have another loop called B. So then I can map them into this new loop. Here I put A, here I put B, and there's X0, X0, X0. So this definition gives you a, a naturally occurring int algebra structure to any loop space. And it happens that the converse statement is also true. So now we have seen that every loop space have a little interval opera algebra structure and the converse statement as um, shows, well, this is a, a result of May following uh, slash F. Okay, so it's originally due to such if then Peter may prove something more general, but uh, we are not going to mention that it's a more general statement in this talk. So if a connected space X 
is a little interval algebra. Then x is equivalent to the loop space of y for some y. And this result is also called the recognition principle. So previously we have mentioned that to describe the algebra structure of a loop space, if you just describe it as associative of, uh, of the home to be, then you are losing like the interior of Pentagon information. But here this recognition principle tells you that by describing this algebraic structure as an um, certain opera algebra, then you have completely captured all of these um, naturally occurring algebraic behaviors. So you are not losing information. Sorry, I, I have a question about that. When you say you're not losing information, I mean, mm -hmm. what exactly do you mean by that? Yeah, sure. So um, the thing about it, we want to describe a loop space. We want to describe its algebraic uh, structures um, on like their loop concatenations. So it's a product on the loop space. You could describe it as associative of the home topic. That's certainly true because, well, um, that, that's a, a true statement. But that's not enough because like other spaces could also have this property, but without being a loop space. So it's like more difficult to be a loop space than I, to have this like a social of home to be property. But now this result tells you that um, to being a loop space is equivalent to have uh, this opera algebra structure. So now this like more refined algebra structure completely captures the uh, properties of being a loop space. Okay, thank you. So mm -hmm. I thought you meant I thought you meant something slightly different, but okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Uh, thank you for your question. And from now on. We will fix uh, our product O for spectrum. And we're, we assume at level one, it is just the uh, sphere spectrum. Let out O be the category of O algebras in spectrum. Um, okay, so that's the main topic of this uh, of this talk, this causal duality. Then Ching Harper, as well as Francis Gaiskari, so they study this particular adjunction. Here, the left-hand side is LHO, and the right-hand side is co-algebra over some K, I'll explain later. There is an adjunction, QC, and let me put this declaration here, neopotent. Um, so let me first explain the meaning of K here. So K is a co-operat determined by the operat O. But the intuition here is like now we have a junction and the left-hand side is certain algebra and the right-hand side is certain co-algebra. And here for any operat O, it has a um, like intuitively, it's like the, the dualization of O, which is a co operat. And K is defined as the bar construction of I, O, I, realization of the simplicial bar construction, where I is the operat, where I n is equal to 
the sphere spectrum when n is equal to one and it's trivial when n is greater than one. And this small decoration here, say new potent. Let me explain the meaning here. So uh, L O new potent is the full subcategory of L O consisting of pronial potent objects and homotopy pronial potent objects. So what are those objects? So X in LHO is called Neopotent if there is some, some integer n such that this algebraic structure specifies the uh, multiplication that is no homotopic for all n greater than or equal to m. So that agrees with our like, intuition for being important like in classical algebra. And that is called going to be prone important if it is a home of limit of neopotent objects. All right, so we have, okay, here. So again, look at this adjunction here, we have seen K is certain co output and we can take their co uh, corresponding co algebras and K is determined by the output O. Um, we have this adjunction, we are on the left hand side, we restrict to home to be pro important objects and being home to be pro important means it's a home to be limit of neopotent and being neopotent means, well, it's higher. Um, once you go to a certain level, then the multiplication becomes trivial. So um, Yep. Uh, I have a question. Uh, does yep. this homotopy limit have to be that of a tower necessarily or any co-filtered no, no, homotopy? Uh, arbitrary shape. Oh, arbitrary shape, not even yep. co-filtered. Okay. Um, yes. Um, I'm certain, well, certainly you could restrict to like certain shape diagrams and came up with a, a different uh, notion, but um, I'm here choosing this definition because like that's part of this uh, Francis Gessler conjecture has appeared in their, in their paper. Okay, thank you. I mean, certainly you could still change the notation and maybe there's like some uh, different result depending on like how you define these terms. But just uh, for the purpose of this talk, I'm just choosing that to be like arbitrary shape. Yep. And so uh, later on when I use this terminology in the talk, I will mean like arbitrary shaped homotopy limit. All right, there's uh, still something I want to say about this life hydrant Q. So that is defined as QX is the bar construction of IOX. So the intuition here is that we take the uh, derived in decomposables of an um, algebra X. So we quotient out like all the decomposable part. I mean, decomposable means that it can be right as a uh, the product of uh, several different terms. And this is related to what we call the topological kernel homology. TQNX is defined to be the pi N of QX. 
topological homology of x. And TQ homology is a, a well-behaved uh, homology theory in the category of all algebras. And like the thing about topological spaces, for topological space, we have two like well-known uh, homology series. One is called, well, one is the singular homology. One is if you just consider these uh, stable homotopy groups and the stable homotopy groups form a homology series. If you take those ideas and want to find their analogs in the category of all algebras, you will realize they, they happens to correspond how to have the same analog, and that is just TQ homology. So if you care about either one of those two like uh, classical homology series, you will also care about TQ homology when you study your algebras. Uh, sorry, Yu. Mm -hmm. uh, if uh, you take an E infinity algebra for mm -hmm. O, uh, does that recover the usual topological under equivalent yes. homology? Yes. Okay, yes. thank you. Yeah, that's the yes. Um, yeah, so. Sorry, I had a question about that too. Is mm -hmm. that is that kind of like saying that if you just look in, in chain complexes that homology and homotopy groups are the same? Uh, sorry, I, I think I didn't understand your question. Well, if you look at if you look in chain complexes, you can take homology, but you can also uh -huh. take like maps out of us out of a like a sphere, which would just be uh -huh, a chain uh -huh. complex uh -huh. one degree. So I, that, that, I mean, I was just wondering if that's why on the algebra side, that there's, they, they become the same or if that's connected, maybe, yeah. Oh, that's, that's a very interesting question. And I, I haven't thought about that direction. So um, I don't have a very good answer at this moment, but, um, but okay, so here's something I can say. So indeed in LHO, if you consider the stabilization, in the category of all algebras, then that will correspond to the TQ homology. Um, I'm not sure like why there's a, like the, the, the reason is like, because on the chain complex side, you have those like homotopy and homology groups. Um, yeah, I don't have a very good answer for that. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. And Francis Gaiskari made this following conjecture. So the adjunction we have mentioned between the O algebras and K co algebras, K co algebras induce equivalence of home to be series. And the conjecture is still unsolved. But what we, uh, what do we know about this conjecture so far? There is a result by Ching Harper. Is that once we restrict to um here to zero connected objects and on the right hand side we also restrict to zero connected objects then we will have uh, equivalence of their home to be series and zero connected objects are particular examples for like those home to be pronipotent objects Another result due to Ching Harper is that if X is uh, neopotent, then the unit map from X to CQX fits into a retract. 
x c q x to x in the Homburg category. Um, other than those results, it seems to be um, difficult to get like more general result. So um, when we thought about this conjecture, then we started to think about like say, um, so instead of solving this conjecture completely, so how about we think like what would happen if the conjecture is actually true? So if we assume the conjecture is true, then the left-hand side and the right-hand side will have the same home to theory. So in particular, that implies a map on the left-hand side, so a map of all algebras between like those home to be problem putting objects. That is a weak equivalence if and only if I map it to the right-hand side after I take their TQ homology, that is still a weak equivalence. About five minutes left. Okay, so um, assume the conjecture is true, then we will have a TQ white height for homotopy pro potent. O algebras. So that means a map from A to B between homotopy pro and point algebras sets of equivalence, if and only if the induced map on the RTQ homology is of equivalence. And previously, there has been two known TQ white theorems. So here is the collection of homotopy pro nilpotent. Two particular examples are like zero connected. And by definition, like neopotent things are already homotopy pro nilpotent. And if you look at TQ white height theorems, Hopper has, they prove the zero connected case. So they have a TQ white height theorem, but for zero connected objects. And Chin Hopper, they prove the new potent case. But uh, the point is, for example, if we take an uh, X to be zero connected and we take a Y to be neopotent, then, then previously there's no known white hat theorem to connect those two objects. And one of the main results uh, I'm going to mention in this talk is that we have a TQ white height for all homotopy pro neopotent. And the idea is to study TQ localization theory. Um, let me just uh, quickly give you the definition and state another result. So we say a vibrant X is TQ local if for any map A to B, TQ equivalence, we have an equivalence of their mapping spaces. So the intuition here is like, we say X is local if X cannot see the difference between TQ equivalent objects. So that means X will only care about TQ homology information and uh, TQ localization for uh, any object M is a map 
from M to L T Q M, where the map itself is TQ equivalence and the target should be TQ local. So in my collaboration is uh, John Harper, we prove that there is a model, well, actually a semi-model structure on LHO, where the equivalences are TQ equivalences and the vibrant objects are exactly those TQ local all algebras. And there's a functorial vibrant replacement functor that gives you this functorial TQ localization map. Um, I guess I can stop here. All right, let's unmute ourselves and thank you. Thank you very much. Good talk. Uh, are you. there any questions? Well, if I may, uh, I do have a question. If you mm -hmm. just go up one page uh, where we have this sure. Venn diagram, right? You mentioned that among homotopy pronal potent objects, we have the zero connected ones and mm -hmm. no potent ones as special cases. Mm -hmm. What would be mm -hmm. some interesting examples that are outside of those two special cases? So examples arising in nature or some interesting homotopy pronal potent objects that are right, so, not uh, of those two special cases. Yeah, so for example, here is, um, okay, so if you are familiar with school video calculus, so it's like, it feels like a tighter approximation, well, tighter approximation in the category of all algebras. So you want to approximate one object by a sequence of like step-by-step, -step, like um, like more complicated objects. So mm -hmm. you take their a tighter approximation and take the limit. And that the thing you get, the final, uh, the final um, thing you get to approximate X, that is always going to be prone to but most of them, um, I would say it's probably not zero, zero connected and also not new potent. I see. So right. that set up, you produce some Taylor Towers whose individual PN mm -hmm. stages mm -hmm. are themselves mm -hmm. nil potent, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see. Got it. Yeah, Thank but their limit is not like still nil potent because, like, they don't have like a universal upper bound. Yeah, got it. And also, I didn't mention that like their that's related to the uh, work of Nico. Um, so we look so. You look at the conjecture side so the the unit of the map, and the unit of the map, which I mentioned in the uh, work of Chin Harper. So they, mm, where is that? Okay, here. So when X is new potent, then there is a, like a retract diagram. So when you get, when you look at this uh, sort of results, you will need to work with uh, the completion uh, construction which is like a uh, sort of analogous to the uh, austere con completion of spaces. And this completion construction will naturally give you something that is not guaranteed to be zero connected or important, but that's still home to be pro important. I see. Right, so, so that's uh, an analogous construction to the uh, E nil potent completion with respect to some spectrum E. You can do that with TQ as well. There's a TQ yes, yes, completion yes, like that. Yes. Yep. Which is still going to be the totalization of a co simplish object. Right? Yeah, so, so it's a totalization of a co simplish diagram, and that's also related to the like the classical like item spectral sequence constructions where you have um, the like the item tower. Yep, so it's that uh, co simplish diagram. Okay. Yep. So the short answer is yes, when you study all algebras, then those pro important objects will naturally occur. And it's not just important or zero connected. Any more questions? If not, let's thank you again. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And thank you all for attending. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Mm -hmm.